basically kill someone just because you don't want them to suffer. Um, and because it eliminates the person instead of just blaming their suffering. Uh, but aggressive treatment, it is okay to reject aggressive treatment. Um, if, if you try all of the reasonable treatments and nothing's working and you and you're going to die and aggressive treatment would just kind of prolong your life, it wouldn't really cure you. Um, Catholic teaching says that it's okay to reject this because typically it greatly decreases your quality of life. Do the bishops give specific directions on what is considered reasonable and or or extraordinary? Do they give details about that? Right. I mean, is is what's reasonable for a twelve year old necessarily reasonable for somebody who's seventy eight? Right. Or is, or is what's reasonable for somebody who's got a terminal cancer not necessarily or um, something that's reasonable for somebody who's healthy, not reasonable for somebody who has a terminal cancer. Does that make sense? Yeah, and branching off of cancer uh, or things like it, regardless of age, like an example of uh, aggressive treatment, you know, like you know, like you said, you know, like you know, right. Yeah, is it is it worth doing this for this person who's this age versus somebody who's this age? And let me be kind of clear about this. The Catholic Church has general principles on end-of-life care but does not have specific detailed, this machine can be used on this kind of person in this sort of things. It's general principles that it is okay to withhold medical treatment if it's extraordinary or if it's not reasonable. Does that make sense? But they don't define reasonable or extraordinary. And do you guys talk about pain and end of life too? Okay, so I'll let, I, I won't interrupt. Sorry. Yeah, let me clarify that last point. That's well stated. Um, the Catholic Church is opposed to euthanasia, but if you are receiving pain medication that's going to shorten your life, the Catholic Church says that's okay because you're addressing the pain. But and this is where you know there's they seem to be talking out of both sides of their mouth that um, just sedating people heavily and putting them into a dopey state isn't something the Catholic Church wants. You want people to be conscious, but you must give them you know you must address their pain. And you're not supposed to kill people, but it might be that the painkillers you are giving somebody are going to shorten their life, and that's okay. Extraordinary meth methods, um, or you can use aggressive treatment to try to save somebody's life, but if it's extraordinary, it's okay to discontinue them and allow death to occur. Does that make sense? Extraordinary is basically either a certain plan aesthetics, whether it needs to knock you out, or uh, it's Oh, in terms of palliative care, yeah. In terms of palliative care, yeah. Um, so, Catholic teaching on assisted suicide. Um, in the Gospel of Life Encyclical, assisted suicide is called basically murder, and um, it tells Catholics not to vote um, or or obey this law, uh, and it said that. Um, 
And the alternative to this is you can refuse harsh treatments um, and use painkillers to reduce suffering. Um, but you just count with people so you can't kind of end your life purposefully, just that you won't have to suffer, you have to let it happen. The, the fear is that it would take democracy to totalitarianism, that if you have the ability to end people's lives, I don't, I'm not familiar with this actual statement, but if you have the ability to end people's lives, there could be an incentive then to say, well, these people, this is expensive, let's end their lives. These people are above this age, let's end their lives. These people have these diseases. It looks like a slippery slope, so I don't know much about the specific document. Right. They they weren't either before, you know, they voted, you know, Hitler and his guys into power. But I, I this seems like a slippery slope. But is there another slide? Okay. Um, so, Catholic um, teaching says that patients who are in a permanent vegetative state, so a coma basically, um, they still have the same fundamental human dignity that everyone else has. And they should receive um, care which includes like a feeding tube or um, things, um, kind of the basic necessities so that they are able to live. And some people might say, gosh, you know, I have this throat cancer, it's hard to swallow, I don't want food, that's fine. But if somebody's in a coma, I think they prefer not to use the term vegetative because it implies that people are vegetables. But, um, and we use that term, we use, we use that terminology, unfortunately. Um, that somebody's in a coma, you can't take away basic nutrition from them. Good. Any other questions you have? Okay. Um, great.